to your head Closing the outer Known primarily as the over-the-top, drill instructor-like frontman for heavy metal titans Pantera, singer Phil Anselmo is also the leader of several other similarly styled side projects. Born on June 30, 1968, in New Orleans, Anselmo developed an admiration for heavy metal as a teenager, leading to his fronting several local bands in the 80s. Legend has it that one night the members of Pantera happened to go to a club in Louisiana that Anselmo frequented, although Pantera had already established a following and issued several albums on their own. The band had grown weary of their spinal tapish musical direction with then-singer Terry Glaze resulting in the dismissal of their Frontman and a re-evaluation of their approach, Anselmo and Pantera headed off and soon he was welcomed in as their new singer. However, here are the facts about Phil Anselmo. Band from Dimebag Memorial. Anselmo likes to be shocking, he seems to say whatever is on his mind, whether or not it upsets fans' bandmates or the community. Behaving in this manner is not the best way to keep to your friends around which Anselmo should know by now, since it got him banned from former bandmate Dimebag Daryl's memorial. When Pantera broke up in 2003, the Abbott brothers claimed Phil Anselmo left the band without telling them, the claim became one of the topics of Anselmo's interview in Metal Hammer's Christmas 2004 issue, Anselmo claims the band broke up because the Abbots wouldn't communicate with him. The Pantera frontman would continue the interview by boasting about how he could kill him like a fucking piece of vapor because of the size difference between the two, ending the rant he deserves to be beaten severely. It was this type of sentiment the way Anselmo had blasted Dimebag in the media before his death that stuck with the Abbott family, it was this sentiment that led them to bar Anselmo from Dimebag's memorial, according to MTV and it all boils down to what our mothers used to tell us think before you speak. He's been accused of racism. To preface this story you need to know a bit about the tragedy that surrounds Pantera, Dimebag Daryl Abbott Pantera's guitarist and brother to Vinnie Paul was murdered on stage in 2005. The band wasn't together at the time, but it certainly affected the entire world of rock, in 2016 a bunch of the greatest rock stars came together to throw a tribute concert to the late guitar phenom, everyone who's anyone was there including Foo Fighters, members of Slayer and Metallica and Phil Anselmo. Anselmo who was on stage addressing the crowd and claims to have been quite drunk at the time, decided it was a good idea to give a Nazi salute and yell out white powered neither the news media nor the heavy metal community were happy with this. Anselmo apologized later for the incident and ended up doing an interview with Rolling Stone afterwards to explain exactly why he isn't a racist guy. Unfortunately for Anselmo, his argument against that characterization boils down to a more intricate version of the fallacious, I can't be racist because I have black friends, of course you can say you're not racist all you want, but when you do racist stuff on the regular, no one is going to believe you. You know like giving a speech on white pride and releasing a song that strikes at Jews and Muslims which according to Billboard and Selmo has done. And Selmo was molested as a child. We'll start our exploration of the untold aspects of Phil and Selmo off with a particularly difficult fact, and Selmo was molested as a child. Anselmo's childhood isn't a popular topic of conversation in part because the times he talks about it are few and far between, one element seems to be consistent throughout his past it was dark. The Pantera frontman was raised by his mother and aunt during the Vietnam War, his father was around, but dad didn't live with them, the boyfriend of Anselmo's aunt was part of the household though and that boyfriend had served in the war. Vietnam followed the man home and Anselmo remembers waking up at night because this man was screaming in his sleep. The darkest part of Anselmo's childhood is probably the molestation, though he doesn't go into detail about it, guess who has molested his entire child fucking hood by numerous people, both men and women Anselmo says during a 2016 Rolling Stone interview, 
This confession comes during the middle of a section where the singer is talking about kids today blaming parts of society for trends and harmful actions instead of individuals, an argument he uses the anecdote to support. Anselmo had a serious drug addiction. If you can't tell already, former Pantera frontman Phil Anselmo has a few problems, some of his problems are of the type you'd expect from a rock star for instance drug addiction. It all started with a medical condition, or at least that's what Anselmo told the world during a 2018 podcast, somewhere along the line, probably due to all the intense rocking, the frontman blew a disc in his back, leading to the type of intense pain that only opiates can satiate. Anselmo was eating hydrocodone and Xanax to feel at ease, eventually the self-medication turned to heroin. For Anselmo the turning point came literally in the form of death, in 1996 according to Metal Addicts, the Pantera frontman was pronounced dead in the band's tour bus after a show in Dallas. Luckily this death only lasted a few minutes before Anselmo was revived. Afterwards, the metal singer went through a rough battle with methadone, which he described to Metal Hammer as falling from a 50-story building every five minutes, in an attempt to get clean. It worked and the dude got sober, but it took a literal death to do it. The moral of the story can be summed up with a simple quote from South Park's Mr. Mackey, don't do drugs. <laughs>